Hey everyone, this is Andrew Kroll, and this is another episode of How to Make a Really Crappy NES ROM. Um, so, for starters, we uh, created this boilerplate ROM that doesn't really do anything, it just kind of uh, launches an emulator and it goes like this, and then it just does nothing. Now, we're going to expand on that today. Um, we're going to actually we're gonna actually get it to load a tile set and hopefully a really dumb fixed screen that we can just show off with uh, some very basic looking tiles and artwork um, yeah so let's get started um, so so far we have our program over here we have a bunch of boilerplate and it does clears out a bunch of memory and then it just goes into an infinite loop here and there's not a whole lot going on um, now, down at the bottom, we have this in chr 0 x 0 thing, um, and you notice that there's nothing after that. Um, well, today we're going to try and embed an art asset into this character bank here, chr, so that we can actually draw things on the screen on the NES. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to embed some artwork into our ROM, and then from there we can actually use that artwork to render to the screen on the NES. Uh, so here we go. Um, over here in my Explorer window I have a new file, it's called molasses.chr. Um, molasses just being the name of the project that I was working on that I made this artwork for. Um, now if we open this up, I've got a program called yychr. Um, that program is actually freely available on the internet, um, and it can edit character. T it can edit tile sets that are in the NES file format, or like the file. Sorry, the binary format the NES expects. So, right here, I have this really shitty list of tiles here. We've got like different stuff over here. Got a bunch of hearts and like grass and letters and stuff and a bunch of different fi little stripe patterns and things. Um, yeah, you can basically make a lot of backgrounds out of very limited tiles. So in my case, I went for really, abst really abstract patterns and just kind of trying to work with that. So um, yeah, on, on the left here, you see all the different tiles and this goes from 00, zero to FF and basically yeah you can have up to 256 background tiles um, which is yeah, it gives you a fair deal of versatility I guess um, yeah uh, you're kinda limited in what you can make in that uh, and uh, there are other limitations like you notice here that all the artwork is only drawn in four colors um, that is an actual limitation of the NES and in fact it's actually slightly worse because uh, really you only get three colors and one of those colors has to be shared or you get four colors but one of those colors in the palette has to be shared between all of your palettes so it's kind of like you only really get three unique colors per set of tiles and then there's other weird limitations which I don't really want to get into yet but uh, you're going to figure them out so yeah over here we got like different tiles and Actually, a better way to view this is if we go to X16 and then we view individual tiles. And yeah, you got all this. And then down here, you've got your palette. Uh, they've just got different previews. Um, it's kind of neat. Like, they actually list the hex values for each of the palette entries. So here's 0F is black, 00, zero is gray, 10 is lighter gray, and then 30 is bright white, and they've got like different stuff over here. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we've got this artwork. We're going to embed it into our ROM now, uh, and from there we can do some fancy stuff. So if we go over here now, just type in embed molasses.chr, and uh, you'll notice little quotation marks. It doesn't matter if you use single quotes or double quotes. What matters though is that these quotes match up. Um, and once you've done that, you've now embedded the artwork into the ROM. And just to make sure that it works, you can like click on the build 
and it just kind of says, yeah, it wrote to the demo NES ROM. If we look, we won't actually be able to see it or anything, but it's in there. Um, so once we actually load up the artwork, we can do some fun stuff there. Um, so next up, to actually see the, the crap that we embedded into the ROM, we're going to have to set up a basic palette, just a really simple color palette to just tell it like, oh yeah, uh, this is the colors that the screen should be drawn with. And then you can actually preview what it's going to look like if you add actual tiles to the map, like what they're going to look like with the palette applied to them. Um, yeah, you basically have to set up a palette anyways to draw things to the screen. It's just um, to even preview the artwork that you put into the ROM, you have to load a palette. Um, so we're going to do that first. So to do that, we're going to create a label. It's called palette. Uh, so def is just a keyword to basically say like, oh yeah, the, the thing after this, define a label. And then there's a colon here. You just kind of put that at the end and yeah. So anything following this marker is like just, th this marker is going to point to whatever happens directly after, the, after it. So if we put say byte like this and then we put in 0x0f 0x0 0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x0x
if we try and just assign it like this. Oh, so another thing, yeah, we have to, we can't assign to memory directly, we can't assign numbers directly to memory, we have to actually put them into a register first. So the A register is the accumulator, which is normally what you use for basic mathematical calculations and stuff. So if we do this, we can get a very basic um, palette setup. Um, now, if we do this, we'll find that this won't work either because it's going to complain about how big the palette based number is. It, if we hit build right now, it says the value 16128 which is the same as the hex value of 3f00. Um, that's outside of the representable range 0 to 255 because the NES is an 8-bit system and registers can only hold 8-bit values. 8-bit values are the numbers between 0 and 255. Um, so you have a very limited range in what you can store in a in a register on the NES. If you want to do bigger numbers, you have to do, uh, you have to actually like do carries when you do additions and stuff to actually like ripple over the whatever carries you make from adding two numbers together and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, what we have to do to actually write in the full address is we have to write it in two parts. So uh, it's kind of weird actually. The NES hardware expects you to write as two separate writes. Uh, so you write the high address uh, of the palette base, which, is, which I, you can easily get the high byte of a number by, if you have a big number and it's like two bytes wide, and you want the higher byte of that, uh, that number, you put a greater than sign in front of it, and that will basically take the high value of that byte so th this will give us the number 3f um, and then we basically just assign that to the address register and um, yeah that will start our little initialization of the shit we have to do to get stuff drawn to the screen and then second of all we have to write the low address so we have to write 00, zero as it turns out for this and just write it to the address register as well. And we always write in this order, high then low. And yes, you have to write two things every time you want to set up the address register. So you, if you don't, then that means the second write you make is going to just, is going to be treated as a part of the address. Yeah, so you have to like write twice to get the full address you want to tell the NES to use. Uh, next up, what we want to do is basically, we're going to create a loop here. Um, and the easiest way to do this, I guess, is we're, we're going to copy how many, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 bytes of crap we need to copy. So we set x equal to 0. Um, we want to assign to the PPU data register. The data register is basically our little pinhole where we tell the NES, oh yeah, write this value, then write this value, and then it basically counts up by 1 or 32, depending on the step setting you give to a certain other, the control register. Um, so anyway, you write to this data register a bunch of times, and it'll just step ahead as you're writing to it. So if you want to write a whole bunch of data to it, you just say, so for instance, we want to write all of the palette data. So the way we do this is we have the palette and we want to colon x to say we want the address at palette plus the value of x. So for starters, we have palette, which is 0x0f. Then the next time we go through this loop, we want palette plus 1. Then we want palette plus two, palette plus three, palette plus four, and so on until we get to palette plus 15. And that's our last thing in the loop. And then we want to end after that. So the way we do this, yeah, we put a colon here to basically say like index this memory location by this register. And the only registers you can index by are X and Y. Um, 
and they are kind of limited in what when you can use them and stuff like that so basically you're gonna have to like yeah it's a little bit of trial and error for a bit but uh, you don't have to worry too much if you're going to do something so using the a register we want to we, we can write it out this way as well we can say a equals palette X and then say NES PPU data equals A. Um, if you put via A, that's just the same as writing this, these two separate lines where we first assign A to palette X and then we assign PPU data to A. It's just saying like use A as the little intermediate spot where we take this thing over here and then we eventually put it over here. We want to put the, we want to just assign through this other variable. So that's just a shortcut I added to the language. Uh, finally, yeah, you have that and uh, you want to increment X and you do this in your loop here. And finally, we need a condition to exit the loop. So the way we do this is we compare X to 16 and we want to do this until uh, we're equal, so double equal sign here. And when we do that, uh, yeah, there it'll terminate the loop. So basically, that's it. So we have our we set up our address register, we set x to zero, we assign palette data at palette zero to the PPU data, we increment x. We compare it to 16 to see if we've hit the end yet. If we haven't, then we repeat this and we just keep incrementing x. Incrementing meaning add by one, if you don't know that terminology. Um, and yeah, so there you are. Um, you just counted through a loop 16 times and you've set up all of your palettes. So now all of this data down here in the palette area is actually copied into video memory and you're good to go. So why don't we just show this really quick and I think I'm going to wrap this video up soon because I'm supposed to meet some friends for coffee. Uh, all right, so if we hit build, we do this. We now have a black screen instead of a gray screen, which is promising because one of our colors is black. Uh, and if we look at debug here and we go to PPU viewer, then we can see this nice little preview of the art we had in YYCHR, which if we look is right here. So we've actually successfully loaded this art asset into our game. Uh, next time we're actually going to try and create a tile map using this art. Um, join me soon when we try and do that. Okay, catch you later. Bye.